Australia's 46th Parliament will be a crucially important place and time for integrity and accountability at a federal level. What are the five big sets of integrity and accountability issues that the 46th Parliament is going to need to confront? Well, the first one is the creation of a National or Commonwealth Integrity Commission, a federal anti-corruption body. The Morrison government's Commonwealth Integrity Commission proposal, however, uh, involves quite a bit of controversy. Currently, the proposal is to restrict uh, the reach of such a body to criminal offences of corruption, like a law enforcement agency, when in fact we know that corruption is much broader, that grey area corruption is really very often what we, sh we should be focusing on. Which brings me to the second big integrity issue, uh, which is whistleblower protection reform. And it was a big success of the 45th Parliament to already achieve a very historic step in terms of improved whistleblower protection for private sector workers under corporation law reforms which have just commenced. So now we need to get on and both upgrade the public sector whistleblowing protections at a, at a federal level and also try and make sure we achieve much better consistency and simplicity in how these protections work. And this has only been reinforced in its importance by the uh, recent in June uh, raids by the Australian Federal Police on Australian media organisations. There are three more big issues. The first is to actually achieve some greater clarity and greater enforcement around our mechanisms intended to control undue influence on politics. And this ranges from the federal government, federal parliament needing to catch up with our states, Queensland and Victoria in particular, on introducing proper transparency in political donations and making, for example, a real-time disclosure regime for what political parties are receiving by way, by way of donation. We need to see uh, greater transparency and more enforcement in our lobbying regimes at a federal level, and this is emphasised by the problem of revolving doors. Former politicians and senior public servants who actually it appears on the face of it in breach of the very weak existing codes of conduct, going straight out of government and then being, taking up lobbying roles or consulting roles or corporate roles where clearly they intend to trade on, uh, the, on information and skills they amassed as ministers in ways that uh, are not necessarily uh, conducive to the public interest. The fourth big issue is, is going to be that we should finally see some movement towards regulating truth in election campaigning. This last federal election saw more falsehoods, more misleading information spread on social media, which clearly amounts to misleading and deceptive conduct. In the rest of our society, in business and in and normal advertising, we have controls on misleading and deceptive conduct. And it's time that we actually introduced equivalent controls to political advertising, to political communication, especially in the age of fake news. And finally, we have some very serious international responsibilities that we need to be addressing, including proposed reforms to our foreign bribery laws, proposed reforms to our anti-money laundering laws. And in particular, we need to see our National Integrity Commission take on a role that is about helping coordinate with state bodies our response to those sorts of corruption problems. We've just seen the, the revelation that uh, the son of former Papua New Guinea Prime Minister Peter O'Neill is living in a $13 million house in Sydney, the, the wealth behind which can't really be easily explained. And so we need to see uh, our National Integrity Commission actually take on a stronger coordination role, tying our federal and state agencies together uh, liaising with international agencies, working with other federal bodies to do that in order to actually ensure that we achieve a holistic response to our international anti-corruption threats here at home uh, in order to make sure that we're playing our role as a proper global citizen. So we can see that dealing with all five sets of issues is not only timely but really necessary in this term of, of the Parliament. We live in a very fast changing world where corruption pressures are only rising and so we can see that biting the bullet on these issues in the 46th Parliament will not only see us achieve these goals but it's what the vast majority of Australians want to see.